All right, kiddos, I'm back, and I worked on making um, three different kinds of patterned paper, and they have a variety of um, colors and patterns on them, each one of them, because I plan on using them a little bit differently. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do, um, well, I was really tempted to cut them apart to start with, but I actually might like having a variety of patterns. So I think at this point in time, I'm not going to cut them apart. And I'm gonna start thinking about the different ways that I can use this paper. So when we're working with paper, we can use a variety of different techniques to attach paper to paper. One of the things that we're gonna talk quite a bit about today are things like a flange, would you roll and make your own shapes, how you can attach those, how you can create little, um, pads or tabs where you can attach and glue and things like that. So let's talk about if I wanted to make, for example, um, a shape that got attached. Let's say I wanted to make a tube kind of a shape and I want to do it with this orange pad, okay? Now I'm going to use this piece of paper and I'm going to roll it into a shape like this. Right? Now, you have a couple of options about how you attach your things. Miss Reborn is just gonna use a little bit of glue. And remember, when you attach, you really wanna hold. So I rolled it, because I want it to be into a tube, and I'm rolling it, I want it to be rounded. And I'm just gonna kinda hold and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I can't just stick this down on my final piece of paper. This is gonna be the bottom part of my sculpture. I can't just stick it down like this or put glue around this edge right here because it will show and kind of poke off. It will probably just come apart. So what I need to make is something called a flange. And I'm gonna show you right here kind of what it looks like. So once my piece is all glued together, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut fairly evenly around some slits that are about the same height, as you can see, because what I'm gonna do is fold them. Now you can fold your slits so that they go to the outside if you want them to be a part of your decoration, meaning that when I glue it down like this, you're going to see those shapes right? You can also fold them to the inside like this and glue on the inside if you don't want people to be able to see them. I'm kind of enjoying their um, extra visual texture right now, so I think I'm going to leave them facing outwards. So when I'm ready to glue, I would flip over this side, and it's up to you whatever you happen to have since I happen to have some liquid glue here and it might be just a little bit easier for me, Miss Rayborn is going to do a little dot on each one of my little sections. Oh no, my glue is stuck. So no, I'm not. I'm going to use my glue stick. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue stick on each one of the spots of my flange. And I'm going to work my way around until I've gotten a little bit of glue everywhere. And then, like I said, I'm doing it on a black paper so that you can see how they stick down. This would be kind of hard to see on white paper, I think. And I'm gonna kind of hold them down like I normally would. I've got my fingers kind of spread around and I'm still counting to make sure they're sticking down, counting to 10 to give them some time to stick. Now, I'm gonna hold my paper up so you can see. Do you see how it's poking out like that? Because we're making a sculpture that sticks out from there. Now, you could build one that's from a piece of paper like this, or you could just build your pieces all together. It's really kind of up to you how you want to do this. At this point in time, I have a couple of options with the top of this. I can, if I want to leave it open, I could cut a different shape or a circle to go on top of it. I could let the inside show. The other thing I can do is I can also cut those little flange strips all the way around and I can fold them inwards like this so that it's making almost like a top 
to my circle shape, my cylinder shape. Now this particular one didn't close all the way in. I still have a little bit of a shape showing there, a little spot, but I kind of like that. And I think I'm even just gonna get a little piece of glue in there. I might have to kind of pinch this and hold just for a minute to kind of close it down. And that's what I'm gonna work on for that particular shape. So a flange is one way you could be gluing down if you want something to be poking up or sticking out three-dimensional like this, right? Now, of course, you could be cutting different shapes and patterns that just fill the space. For example, I'm feeling kind of inspired by maybe this yellow to make a shape, an organic kind of a shape that just sort of fill this, the space. So I'm just going to cut free form. I haven't even really decided what I'm making. I'm making, this would be called an organic shape. It's kind of reminding me of a paint splatter right now because of how um, liquidy it looks, like a splat. So I could find a place to overlap that. It has sort of a yellow pattern on it. It might be kind of hard to see. I'm not really ready to glue it down yet, so I'm just gonna leave it so that I can um, make some decisions later after I've made a few more things. Now, as we were looking at examples, we saw a couple of videos where um, there are certain people who like to make um, a pattern with their paper cutting something like a fringe. For example, if I cut this paper and I won't cut all the way to the top because then all those little pieces would fall apart, right? They would just be individual little slivers of paper. So I'm cutting small little spots. Can you guys see how that's gonna work? When I can kind of spread it out and make um, a bit of a pattern or a visual texture with this fringe. So I encourage you to think about cutting fringe. We saw an example of that in the video. Another thing you can do if you want to make three-dimensional kinds of shapes for your sculpture, ones that poke out like this one, if you don't want it to be, try this one out. I'm gonna put this over here just so you can see it as an example of things you can make. Another one is if you want something to be more like a geometric shape, if you don't want it to be rounded like this one. So I think I'm gonna use this red patterning that I made. And what if instead of it being rounded like this, what if I wanted it, for example, to be something like a triangle, okay? So a triangle has three sides, so I'm gonna fold and fold. Now you'll notice that one of my sides is just a little bit longer than the other, which is good because I'm gonna need a place to fold and attach it. So I'm going to fold like this and then see this little extra piece, this little tail piece right here? I'm gonna fold that part as well. So it sounds funny that I'm making three folds when I only need three sides, but this one is where I'm gonna glue and attach it. Now, if you want the pattern to show on the outside, you can do that, or I could tuck it underneath and glue like this if I don't want that to show. So I folded myself a little extra flap. I'm using my glue, and I'm going to stick that piece of the fold underneath to attach it. And again, I'm gonna hold and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Should be pretty well attached. Okay. Now, if I'm making just a freestanding kind of a sculpture, which some of you might want to, you could glue it down onto a piece of paper like this, or you could be making um, a three dimensional sculpture where you just stack up these objects on top of each other. If you wanted to, I don't think I can get that one off of there, but I could, I could stack this one on top. I could be creating all different kinds of things. One of the things that you can do, if you'd like to do that, is you can cut slots for your pieces to go inside. For example, if I want this to sit flat, I might have to trim just a little bit because there was a little extra poking out there to get it to a more flat place. It 
wasn't quite even, so now it sits evenly. But what if I, for example, wanted this guy to sit inside of here? I could cut myself just a little slit. So see how I just made one little cut, and I'm gonna slide this piece of paper inside of there so that now that's its spot. If I want to be sure that it's extra secure, I could also cut a little piece or a slot on this side and put them into each other, which is gonna make that super secure. It's not gonna come poking out. So if you want to, you can build a sculpture that actually stands upwards, like a three-dimensional sculpture like this. One of the things that's pretty important about that is look, now on one side, my paper has a pattern, but the other side, it doesn't. So I think I would wanna pull this apart, get myself a marker, and add a pattern to the back of this side of the paper because it does show. So I don't want it to just be empty. That wouldn't be very interesting at all. So as you're working, remember that you could be making a three-dimensional or a three-dimensional paper sculpture, one that stands on its own, like this one right here. I'm ready to put it back together. So I have to find the spot where I made my little slot. And I have to find this one, and then I can slide it into there. So I could make one that stands on its own, like this paper sculpture that I've just kind of started to work on. You know what could be really fun for this is if I folded some of this fringe and maybe it was kind of coming out of here, possibly. That could be really interesting. Or you could be gluing it down onto your paper like this. I also could take this guy now and glue it down like this onto this piece of paper so that I could hang it up on the wall if I wanted to and I would have pieces poking out. So now that you have a few ideas about how to attach and glue things, I cannot wait to hear and see about your paper sculptures and your artwork created from paper. I hope you're feeling inspired by the artists that we talked about today. Remember that it could be something that gets glued onto a flat surface, like this example here, so that it pokes out when you hang it onto a wall. It could also be a freestanding sculpture, like this beginning of one right here that I have just started, it only has two pieces, it definitely would need more to be interesting. Or you could just enjoy working with your paper uh, and create some kind of a collage, uh, like some of the artists that we saw by rolling your paper. One of the artists that we saw made a lot of things by rolling paper. Do you remember her? She would roll things like this. That's a lot more fun if you happen to have colored paper because of course this just looks white even though it's got a pattern on it because of the end. Now you could color the top of it if you wanted to, to create patterns. So I hope you're feeling inspired by our paper sculpture artists and our collage artists. I cannot wait to hear about the amazing things that you make. Um, have fun. Missing you. Bye for now, Mrs. R.